My name is Brennan. I'm a technical leader with the Meraki Switching Product Management Team here at uh, Cisco. I've also got Alex with me, who will come up uh, to tell you a few things a little bit later once he's finished putting his game face on. Uh, I'm going to give you a sneak peek of what's coming in MS17. This is the next major firmware release for the Meraki Switching Platform. Uh, let's see, we are anticipating this to kind of beta here in the second calendar quarter, so spring, with uh, stable GA later third quarter, so fall, we'll say, okay? I'm going to start talking a little bit about device health. Uh, and we have this kind of grand strategy across all of our products at Meraki for this sort of unified vision of like a network health, right? No, we don't really you know, treat um, our networks as isolated domains. But in order to get there, we kind of have to start with this, these building blocks. And that's where device health comes into play. So for MS-17, this is going to look like, at first, uh, CPU and memory utilization details and switch and environment temperature on every individual switch that we have. So a bit of a deeper look at what's going on at the device level. But we like to talk about things like working better together across all of our platforms. And so you see at the bottom, there's an example of uh, MT sensor temperature and regional temperature there as well. And this is a really like, crisp and easy to understand example of, of that better together kind of uh, idea. So you, know, you can imagine if we're looking at the temperature of a switch and it's hot, it would be useful to know that the fact that the data center also very hot, you know, and that there's a heat wave happening in Amsterdam right now because these things all relate to each other. Okay, if we carry on, um, here is a very short-term example of this. This will actually be launching in the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, great work on, from our MT team. So it's not directly related to the switch firmware. So it'll just show up in dashboard for a number of customers. This is the ability to uh, pick any of those sensors in your network and add them right onto the switch page so you can get that context. Again, you're looking, something's wrong with the network. I want to know if this is, you know, just a switch having a bad day or if there's external factors involved, right? So you can see here my data center is having a pretty bad day. It's wet. It's almost four or 31 degrees in my you know, data center. And that's definitely going to be impacting the operation of that device, right? So, you know, one of the things we've kind of uh, at a really simple level tried to keep in mind is this idea that we, we want to have context without having to go to a different page and come back and go and come back. So this is a good example of where we're starting on that health journey. But if I go a little further into that device health again, we saw examples previously of um, the CPU metrics and the uh, temperature metrics uh, and memory utilization kind of at a point in time. But Meraki always does a really good job as well of kind of getting ahead on the benchmarking. We've all been to that place where, you know, there's a problem and now we're looking at it. And we're going, oh, the CPU utilization is 90%. Is that bad? Is that good? And, and you know, a lot of people find out um, after the fact that maybe their switches have been running at 80, 90% utilization all the time, perfectly fine, there's no problem. So the benchmarking is really important, right? And we do a good job of kind of collecting that telemetry for you so that you can look through it, allowing you to filter. You know, maybe you want to look specifically what's been dropped by the CPU from SDP and see if that correlates to some issues you're having or is ARP driving, you know, um, problems you've seen and so on and so forth. So this is what we're anticipating uh, coming with that beta of MS-17, a real good kind of initial step into all of the cool things we can get out of our devices and then use to build that bigger picture of what's wrong with the network. Is, is there going to be um, like a, a trigger or something if there's a percentage change uh, in that? Could you, could you set what that percentage yeah, could be? Yeah, so um, I, I've, uh, tongue in cheek, I joke that every time we, you know, announce something, everybody asks, you know, like, well, are you going to do two steps down the road. And of course, these are all things that we want to do. Um, and so we're starting that. But yes, we have all sorts of, you know, ideas for like the guided troubleshooting workflows that we've done and say, well, now we need to build the telemetry so that we can get all the information to do exactly that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's device health. I'll talk about something a little more, you know, network centric next. 
remote span and VLAN based span are things that we've had a lot of customer asks for over the years and we're finally doing it. So we're gonna give that to a few folks. Um, the limitation today is, you know, you can do port mirroring very easy in dashboard, but it's limited to, to an individual switch. So uh, we're gonna have a little bit of a wizard based workflow here. Choose, you know, your port or VLAN that you wanna use as a source. Take all that traffic shunted across the network to um, another switch and I'll put it into a VLAN or port and manage that going forward. So pretty simple, straightforward, but again, something that we've had a, you know, lots of asks for over the years and we're glad to finally be uh, answering that ask. Okay. This one's a little more exciting. Admittedly, our span is not the sort of thing that gets me out of bed in the morning, as critical as it is, but port profiles is super cool. So today we have static port profiles and as kind of a recap, this is taking like the four or 10 or 12 configs that you do over and over and over again on a switch port, just creating a template out of them so that you can attach them as a bundle to switch ports. That's static port profiles. We have that now. The next step though, is this idea of dynamic port profiles. So we launched something, I guess a couple of years ago now, called, it was originally called Secure Connect. And then one of our other product teams stole the name. So we rebranded it Secure Port. Uh, but it was this very rigid, and I, I say that like it's critical, but it was a very effective tool to like automate configuration of switch ports for Meraki APs. So you plug in an AP and the switch port reconfigures itself as a trunk, that AP comes online. And when you unplug it, arguably more important, the switch goes back to a default, a dummy, a black hole config, right? But of course, the, in, the, like the immediate following ask when we launched that was, ooh, can you do this for Meraki cameras? Oh, can you do this for Cisco phones? Oh, can you do this for my IoT device made by some company we've never heard of? <laughs> um, and so we realized very quickly that that rigidity was, you know, it wasn't gonna be scalable, right? Even if we did build more use cases for it, we were never gonna cover everybody's use cases. So we went in a slightly different direction uh, and this is the ability for you to create automations that work, you know, for whatever your situation is. So three kind of main trigger mechanisms we're looking at, at least initially, CDP, Mac OUIs, and, and radius uh, responses here. So you can imagine that Cisco phone example, right? I can detect that based on CDP or LLDP information. I can match on that. Similarly, just about every device you can think of, you can probably determine at least the manufacturer based on the Mac OUI, or you do a .1x authentication and have the Radius server send back a port profile to apply, okay? So this becomes really flexible now, right? You plug something into a switch port, it's gonna identify that device one way or another and apply a port profile for you. Same idea though, when you unplug it, it's gonna go back to a default config, so you have this incredibly scalable flexible and automatic port configuration that almost takes like the human part out of moves, adds and changes all together. So no more human error, but as well, like, you know, less of the boring stuff on the network that you have to do and more time on, you know, other things. So I'm excited about this one. MS-17 uh, will bring the first kind of iteration of those automations to dashboard. I'm gonna hand it to Alex to talk about radius configuration because he's the expert. And in Canada, we spell radius differently. So didn't want to confuse it. Thanks, Brennan. <laughs> uh, real quick to recap, uh, my name is Alex Berger. I'm a principal TME in the Meraki product uh, organization. And I wanted to bring up something. This isn't necessarily firmware related, but we are trying to start taking consistent configs that you have to do over and over again and bring them up to the org level so that you can reuse them. And so. Uh, the first one that we really got out the door is uh, building your ICE servers at the org level so you can just attach them to policies so you don't have to remember the shared secret or have to type in and then potentially have a typo uh, you know, over and over again like we've had historically. Now, I did hear some folks interested in uh, packet captures earlier, so this one's actually really neat. Um, we've been putting a lot of work towards trying to take our, our PCAP function and kind of enhance it and add more things that we can do. And so with MS-17, we're gonna be launching our cloud PCAP, which will allow for not only uh, dashboard to store the captures. So if you've ever done packet captures with Meraki, typically it's streamed to your browser. So 
if your browser crashes or you lose connectivity, you might lose that PCAP. And so with Cloud PCAP, we're going to actually stream that capture to a storage bucket, and then you'll be able to interact with it in a couple different ways. But uh, for instance, being able to share it or download it uh, from dashboard. Um, we're also going to allow you to schedule captures. So if you've ever worked with uh, troubleshooting scenarios where you need to grab a PCAP at like 7 a.m. when everyone rushes in the building, uh, you can always set a schedule in this case and then be able to grab that across multiple switches and not have to worry about going in, clicking, and making sure that you're successfully capturing traffic. Now, we didn't want to stop there. And so the next piece is we're also going to have a Wireshark-like experience in Dashboard. Uh, we're going to call it a cloud packet analysis. I don't remember what specifically, but it's essentially going to be a Wireshark-like interface where you're able to go in and analyze the packets without having to download the PCAP, open it up in Wireshark. You can do it on a tablet. Oh, this way? All right. I was getting the, the eye. Um, and we're, we're planning on putting a lot of work in here, uh, including looking at ways that we can also analyze those packet captures, potentially perform uh, root cause analysis, uh, especially if there's a big issue going on. And so um, moving on, because I know I've only got a few minutes, uh, we also are bringing with MS-17 Mac block list. This seems like a trivial feature, but we wanted to make sure that we did it the same way we support uh, Mac block lists with uh, our switching, or not switching, uh, wireless and MX products. And so if you've ever worked with Dashboard, you can select a client and you can just block them uh, really quickly. We're going to leverage that same concept as well as the same APIs. So if you have any, like, workflows built to automatically block clients that are misbehaving, uh, we'll be able to tie right into that with uh, MS-17. This has been a really exciting one, and I want to kind of save it for semi-last. Uh, MS-17 is going to be our first introduction of adaptive policy on uh, a little compact switches and uh, across our MS-130X and R models, so also our ruggedized switch. This means we're able to bring uh, inline SGTs, micro-segmentation and control, down to even little desktop compact switches and do so all through dashboard. And this will all interoperate with uh, you know, the rest of the TrustSec capable devices that Cisco has, which means that if you have use cases for like a you know, C9300, uh, as we call the Dash M, you can have that in as your core or you know, large closets, but also be able to connect uh, you know, these smaller compact uh, MS-130Xs. Um, this is set to uh, launch right with MS-17, so should be a good time. So I'm going to hand this back real quick to Brennan to wrap up with uh, digital optical monitoring. Alex, for ruining the surprise. <laughs> Thanks, guys. i got to find my X. Pardon me. Okay, so digital optical monitoring. This is a little bit more of that... Um, device health, but it's a little unique in that we're actually, you know, displaying health metrics for a device plugged into the switch. Um, it, it's kind of table stakes. Like there has been this ask for a long time, show me what's plugged in um, to the switch at a little better level. And so we're finally kind of taking that to heart uh, and putting some investment in there. Uh, but doing it in a Meraki way again, where we can add, you know, some more value. So today, if you plug an optic into a switch, we tell you the type and the serial number. Uh, but further, with 17, we're going to start showing you the TX power, the RX power, the temperature, voltage, and current, if reported by that module uh, in Dashboard. There are a couple of kind of Easter eggs here, though, where we take it a little further. First off, I mean, you can see thresholds here. So we're giving you warning messages or, or critical um, flags. And that is different for every type of module. In fact, even the same type of module with different manufacturers, right? So we actually have to ingest that data into Dashboard, um, which is probably no surprise here where this will like start uh, with Meraki Optics and Cisco Optics. So we're working furiously in our background to plug all these into our switches and the test beds and collect all the data um, that we need so that, you know, when you're looking at six, what does it say here? Six, you know, DB, is, is that good, you know? Um, so we can provide that feedback based on the type of module, but whether or not you know we've exceeded a threshold that's good for that module. Of course, in addition to real-time values, you see the benchmarking here as well. So you can go back 
and see, especially if you start to see like, you know, um, a decline in transit power over time or received power, I should say, over time or an increase in temperature over time. And you get the ability to sort of start to foresee the problems happening before the module actually completely fails on you, which is usually when you find out, right? Uh, further on the right here, I guess you see on the switch ports page, we're adding the ability to kind of add these metrics in a column. So when you're glancing through your entire network at an aggregate level, you know, top to bottom, it's really going to be easy to spot where you're having problems if you're doing that spot check on Monday morning sort of idea. Okay. Look a bit further, a little detail on things like being able to compare. So, you know, choose that I want to see transmit power side by side with temperature. Um, so that I can get those correlations, right? Is one decrease when the other increases and so on and so forth. So those thresholds, this is also going to be available, all this telemetry via the API as well as in dashboards. So if you want to monitor that programmatically and create automations or triggers, you know, of your own, you'll have that ability as well. All right. That's, that's MS-17, guys. Hopefully there's some uh, interesting things there. Uh, and again, hopefully you can see, you know, we're trying to still take to heart that idea of keeping things Meraki simple, but working well together with the rest of our products and, you know, things getting better over time. Thanks very much.